positive that goats appreciate us as much as we appreciate them. Come on. Oh, hey guys. Um, how are you doing? My name is Brain Smasher, and we're live in the bunker. A little chilly down here. I'm cold. Thank you for watching. This is uh, another boring ass collection update. I was kind of wanting to do this sooner rather than later um, so that I can have fewer albums to talk about uh, and kind of give you a, a little bit of a breathier uh, description and review of the things that I got in because there's some awesome shit in this pile here. What we're listening to in the background, I don't know if you can hear it. Might need to get a little louder. This is uh, my old band, Satan's Almighty Penis with Pulsing Feral Spire. Feels good to listen to this again. It's been a long time. So, uh, yeah, putting this in, giving it a spin. <clears throat> I sang and um, played keyboards and drums in this band. Uh, there's me looking cute and there's my friend who you've seen on the channel here um lord sardonyx he and i played in this band for 15 years or so um and then just kind of put it on ice comfortably put it on ice uh it was good times and i'm really proud of this stuff and it's fun to listen to look at this artwork this is just absolute insanity there are still many copies of this to be had, uh, and I recommend you get a copy. I did all the layout for this, and I went absolutely nuts creating this monstrosity of artwork. Um, had a really fun time handwriting all of the song titles on there. So, I don't know. It's just a really, really interesting, weird, just... Just, it's just us, man. It doesn't sound like fucking anything else. There's there's nothing else that sounds like this, and I'm super proud that we stuck to our guns and wrote cool, weird, kind of bunch of dick joke kind of black metal. So, uh, yeah, get that if you want to support cool stuff. Um, so I've got a few things in, and some of the stuff is really, really cool. Uh, my buddy Dave recommended that I pick this up out of the Pagan Flames Distro Dungeon when I was up there the other day. And I am so impressed with this. Thank you, Dave, for recommending this. You know, this just kind of looks like any other forgettable black metal kind of thing. Um, but he tipped me off. This was really good, so I picked it up. Um, this is a, first of all, the band is called Endlichite. Uh, and this is a demo compilation. I wasn't familiar with this until um, I picked this up. This is a compilation of all the demos, which are just like, I think there's three or four of them, and they were like super limited for their time. Um, so Amar Fatih put this compilation out um, two years ago, four years ago now. <laughs> um, and I don't know, the band is super obscure. Um, all the songs are just numbers, Roman numerals, I guess. Uh, all the members are anonymous. Uh, but this is just super, just frosty, obscure kind of black metal. It reminds me quite a bit of Abyssic Hate's Suicidal Emotions. It also reminds me quite a bit of Transylvanian Hunger by Dark Throne. There's really nothing here to look at, but man, this music is just super immersive and dark and dreary um, and it's just super good so I also picked up picked up a lot of stuff from him I also picked up three albums from a band I was just kind of a little bit familiar with um, I had seen this cover for years and years and years and I didn't really know what it was this band is called Pandemonium uh, and the reason I picked this three of these up are there's a couple reasons. 
Um, the description on the website said this was Poland's answer to Sam Ale. And seeing that this came out in 1994, that piqued my interest right away. So, picked up a couple copies. This came out on Old Temple. This is a reissue, obviously. Came out on Old Temple a couple years ago. Um, so that was another thing that tipped me off that this might be awesome. Uh, and this is a live album along with some studio EP. It's kind of like an EP with a live thing tacked on the end of it. Also by Old Temple. Uh, so this is, came out in 94. This is called The Ancient Catatonia. And then Misanthropy came out in 2012. And it's a, they don't have a lot of full lengths. Um, now... I guess let's get to the nitty gritty. The, I don't. I don't feel like it sounds like Samuel enough. Maybe I'm just being a little too picky. I'm kind of in a weird mood, and we'll get to this um, when we get to the album that this all kind of is based around. But um, it sounded cool, but it wasn't really as good as I expected it to be. From a couple cursory spins of a couple of these different ones, it just kind of sounds like this macho tough guy singer who likes to put a lot of effects on his vocals is just like muscling around a band into playing some kind of mid-paced kind of black metal dark metal satanic dark metal or whatever it i don't know it kind of misses the mark it doesn't really have a lot of charm for me and i was surprised i thought this i was like damn how did i miss that um even read a couple of good reviews about this debut and being that it came out in 94, I figured this was a fucking sure thing. Um, I don't know. I don't want to spend a lot of time bitching about that, but maybe someday it'll uh, hit the mark, or maybe I can just exchange it for something else. I also picked up uh, this excruciate split with Epitaph, The Crypt. Definitely put this one out. I haven't listened to this very much. It sounds just like uh, you would think it does. Excruciate and Epitaph were two way old school, kind of underappreciated Swedish death metal bands from the early 90s. Um, this split is super hard to come by um, original copies of. So that's where the Crypt steps in. Good, good stuff. Also picked up from the Pagan Flames distro. Um, at the suggestion of my buddy Dave. This thing. So this is a band called Morgart. I'm trying to get my damn with the the Schlacht. The Schlacht. In Ach Symphonien. I don't know. Again, another thing that I would have just looked over, not really cared about um, until he tipped me off. This is awesome. And it it's really awesome. Dave, you have um, unparalleled taste in this kind of stuff. That's why we're buds. Um, so this is a Swiss black metal band who puts <laughs> a lot of effort into makeup and wardrobe. Look at this. Look at those fellas. He does not want you coming into his motherfucking castle. But stay out. And then this just just killed me. Look at these guys. How can anyone take black metal seriously? This is really, really good. Um, and yeah, if I would have just found this out in the wild, I definitely would have picked it up after I saw these band photos. Um, so, I don't imagine any of you guys are familiar with the Swiss band from like 94, 95, 96 called Forced which is F-O-R-S-T-H. Um, and they were kind of a symphonic uh, early 90s black metal band. And this is a continuation of that style. Members of post force if you will. Um, but this is super highly melodic, really synth-heavy kind of stuff. Kind of basic riffs, but there's just lots of like orchestral kind of synths going all over the place. Um, it's really fun and kind of, it's got this like, vampiric sort of regality to it. It's really fun. The Schlacht by Morgart. Um, it is really hard to listen to this while I'm talking. So if I seem distracted, yeah, like 
I just remember all these riffs and all these drum parts and the lyrics just happening all over again. I don't listen to my music very often. I try and make it a, a special occasion when I do, so you're welcome to my special occasion. I also picked up um, the new one from Dawn Raid. I did talk about this one on my year-end list um, briefly, but so, so, so good. Prosthetic Records came out with this. Um, the lyrics on this band are just poignant, intelligent, and just they cut straight to cut straight to the chase like nothing else does. Um, I hope you guys give this a chance. Uh, like I know it's a new school band. They've got some left leaning politics on their sleeve, and I'm so into that. And I know a lot of people aren't. And I know that probably scares a lot of people off, but the music here backs it up, and I stand behind the message personally in many, many ways. The Hold Sedition Plain Song by Don Raid, give it a shot. Holds up, dudes. Also picked up this one from Volcandra. This is the first record. I decided to just dive in on Volcandra. This is Fallen Angels Dominion. Um, originally came out in 2010 on Napalm and the story on these guys is just there's nothing more than a dissection worship band um, and they do a pretty good job of it I've heard friends of mine say that they are every bit as good as dissection were and man first well okay to Thulkandra's credit, they never fucking released Re in Chaos, so they've got that going for them. They also never murdered anyone for being a homosexual. But I just kind of felt like, all right, I'll give them a shot. Now, as good as Dissection, no. Let's just get that out of the way. Fuck no. Um, but great artwork by Necro Lord there. And yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know, at their worst, you could say they're a poor man's Dissection. Um, Definitely leaning more in the Storm of the Lights Bane era, uh, if that needs to be said, of Dissection. Um, but where I felt like the Somber Lane was a little bit more loose, a little bit less polished, um, and a little bit more kind of frosting than cake, um, this is a little bit more Storm of the Lights Bane. There's a lot of just unrelenting, blasty kind of fortitude to their music. Um, and in that regard, I feel like they sound, that's where they sound different from Dissection. Um, but they make no bones about it. We are a Dissection worship band, um, and this is their first one. So, uh, I might wind up picking up their second and third one. I remember when their most recent one came out, maybe 2015 or so, um, being pretty impressed with it after thinking that the band was kind of a slouch. So I came around a little bit. Um, let's see, also picked up, let's just finish up the Pagan Flames Paul. This uh, Solitude Eternus with uh, Through the Darkest Hour. Man, I have owned this on LP for a long time and I have listened to this uh, on MP3 for years and years and years. This is probably my favorite Solitude Eternus record. I'm going to turn this down just a hair, because it is distracting as fuck. This music was so chaotic and just bonkers. Fucking bananas. Um, so Solitude Eternus were a band I've just kind of never really fully came around to. I've always respected the hell out of them, but they play a kind of music that I just don't really reach for very often. Um, but having finally come into a CD copy of this, um, really, really threw me into a Solitude Eternus mood. Um, and I've been listening to this over and over and over again for a couple of days. It's so fucking good. First of all, this band is super underappreciated. They really never got their due. Um, I would put these guys, I would, honestly myself personally, I would prefer to listen to Solitude Eternus over Candlemass. Nine times out of 10, easy. I think Robert Lowe is such an enigmatic vocalist, and Messiah is such a cheesy fucking vocalist. I just can't fucking hang, man. But John Perez's riffs are just so fucking delectable, and they've got a classiness to them. 
Uh, and Robert Lowe just kind of brings this vampiric kind of theatrical thing to it. And his voice is just golden. The man, mm, he's just got a range that just can't be outdone. Um, he sings mostly clean vocals, and he's just a wonderful vocalist. They just, they're a band that just kind of worked a little bit too late for, for like getting started at the right time. Um, they never really uh, were on a label that really did everything that they deserved for them. Um, so, I don't know, maybe a lot of things went wrong for them, but they recorded um, a slew of albums that are just absolutely amazing. And this is my favorite. If you need any convincing, the song Haunting the Obscure, track two on here, is so fucking good. Um, the, but like the artwork on this is terrible. Most of their albums have just fucking garbage album covers. That's another reason I think uh, they never really caught on. But man, this is so good. I've just been in a really like big riffs kind of mood lately. Um, so I did talk about this also in my last video, Orator, Capital Gnosis. Um, I had a lot of people respond really well to that. Um, but yeah, it's just a killer record. Um, I don't really, they're hard to categorize. And I guess if you did find a proper category for them, it would be among bands like those kind of cheesy newer thrash bands that sound like super clean and polished, like Havoc and fucking... I don't, I don't listen to any of that shit, so I really wouldn't know, but they're so much more brutal and complex and energetic than that kind of stuff, so this toes the line between death metal and grind and thrash in a lot of ways, um, and it didn't really strike me until I was playing it in that video that the vocalist is absolutely flying off the fucking walls, super talented, so... It's worth stating again, this album fucking rules, shreds all over the place. Um, and I had a, just a slew of friends write to me and say like, Dude, that orator was fucking amazing. Alright, so I have a friend of mine, Kate, who uh, I think watches all my videos, I think. And uh, she just recently bought a po copy of Moonblood's Rehearsal 12 or something. And it just kind of reminded me like, man... I never got around to liking Moonblood or finding the right one or whatever. They got a shit ton of rehearsal demos that were all limited to like a hundred copies or something. Um, and like, I would just, a lot of times with bands like that, if, if you sound like shit and you definitely don't want me to hear your music, then fine. I'm, I'm kind of good. Um, that doesn't draw me in as much as I guess it does most people. But anyway, so I checked out a couple of Moonblood rehearsals back in, I don't know, fucking 20 years ago, probably, when they were first coming out. Um, Taste Your Taste German Steel or whatever, too, didn't do anything for me. Um, so I just, I felt like I missed the boat on Moonblood. But I did some looking around, and I just kind of started poking around, listening to some other Moonblood stuff, and I came upon um, the project that the singer has now continued doing called Azazul A-Z-A-X-U-L and uh, this is his most recent record The Saints Impaled um, and yeah if I found this out in the wild I would just go whatever this is boring this is a really really fantastic and special release especially if you're a Moonblood fan uh, like I said I never was but um, what this is um, is a couple of original Azazul songs, maybe two or three, and the rest of the album is Moonblood covers, which is, I don't know, kind of a weird way to put it when you were in the band that you're covering. So it's just kind of like a more polished, more palatable, kind of a best of Moonblood album. Um, and it fucking clicked with me really, really hard. So much so that I went back and I listened to a couple of Moonblood demos again and it just wasn't doing it for me. But this fucking Saints Impaled is super good. I highly, highly recommend it. It just shows how that fucking black metal magic can be achieved with such simplicity. It just illustrates so boldly how everybody is out there fucking overthinking it and doing it wrong. Um, 
in a sense. I mean, I don't stand behind that entirely, but I have been just going in such a back to basics, um, 90s, second wave kind of style stuff so hard, especially like the non-Scandinavian American and like Polish and Swiss kind of stuff. And we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, this fucking rule, this just slayed me entirely. Um, a few caveats to it are that the production is like, I don't know, I appreciate that it is kind of slick and sounds good, but it could use a better mixing job on it. And the drumming is actually, I think, played by an electronic kit, maybe a sampled kit or something. There are a few of the drum samples on here that just kind of take me out of the mood. Um, it just kind of, I don't know, kind of kicks you out of the tree in a way. As a drummer, as a person who's kind of annoyed with a little bit of those eccentricities, I don't think I feel like that would take away much from most people. But it was a little bit of a gripe for me. I felt like some of the drum samples were a little too kind of phoned in. And if they would have just spent a little bit more time making this a little bit more perfect, I felt like it would have been better. But I just don't understand why people aren't freaking out about this. Get a hold of the Saints of Pale by Isaac Zool. I got this on eBay for maybe eight bucks or something from the singer. Um, he sent, I want to say he sent like a flyer and signed it or something too. Um, <laughs> I might have thrown that away by accident. I don't remember. But this is fucking cool. Especially uh, Justin Stubb, if you're watching, get that shit. All right. I also picked up, yeah, the rest of these are fucking absolute bangers. This has been on my want list for a really long time. Um, this is Parnassus. Let the stars fall and the kingdom come. Um, so this is Frederick Soderlund of Octinimos and a myriad of other Algeon, a lot of other Swedish black metal um, entities. And this is just totally highbrow, like drum machine, synthy black metal, played at like maybe 300 BPM. I don't know how he fucking does it, but it is, this originally came out in 97, if I'm not mistaken. Great, great stuff. It actually says here on the back, stop the human mind. We lend our full support to the PMRC movement and their guidelines. Abolish free will. And then there's this statement in here talking about how his lawyer wouldn't let him publish the lyrics because they incited terrorism. I love that. I love that kind of shit. There are lyrics in here, um, but I paid a pretty pretty good amount for this. Um, this regularly goes on Discogs for like 80 euro when it does come up. So, and I got this for a pretty good price. Um, and since I've been selling a couple of my records lately, I felt like, yeah, I'll splurge a little bit. Yeah, this is killer, killer stuff. Um, it kind of reminds me in some times of Bathory in a way. Really basic riffs, but like Bathory riffs played on keyboards. It's just another, a whole other beast. I've got the other Parnassus record in my collection. I picked that up a couple of months ago or so. So I am very, very pleased to have both Parnassus albums in my collection. Um, that brings just like a level of highbrow elitism to my collection that no one gives a fuck about but me. All right, so also in one of my reaction videos, I was playing this weird thing. This band is so weird. So it's gonna be hard to see, but they're called Ufich Sormir, and they are from France. And if you recognize this artwork, it is by Chris Verwimp. The album is called Anthem to the Glory of the Great Octagon. Um, and there is no better way to describe these guys than to say that they are one million percent Balsagoth worship on this album, which came out in 2001. They went on to do some of the most horrible music that has ever entered these ears. I would rather listen to anything than their third album. If, if you're a Satan's Almighty Penis nerd, this is a funny part where we played a skit 
where a warrior wrestles a minotaur, and it's it's fun. It was really fun to do. This so this also is pretty rare and sought after and expensive, and I paid about 15 bucks for this on Discogs, and I was surprised that it came up for so cheap. But I want to say this might be a bootleg for how shitty. I don't know if you can see, but kind of looks not that great the colors on this are really dead but the seller was in the US and had tons of great feedback so I don't know whatever since I only paid 15 bucks for it it's not that big of a deal um, I also think the disc kind of looks like shit the colors are just kind of washy and high contrast um, anyways it's Balsa Goth Worship it's super fun and stupid um, and if you're bored, check out the other stuff these guys did. It's like fucking French metal space cowboy kind of shit. It is, it is fucking unthinkably god awful. <laughs> oh man, I wish I wouldn't have listened to that shit. Also got in, I'm saving the best for last. I kind of like doing that to you guys. Um, we've got a double CD from, well, Slaytanic Slaughter. So for some reason I went back and I watched my best tribute albums video that I did. I'll put a link down below if you're curious at all, but I realized I really like tribute albums. They're fucking fun. A lot of work go into them, and I don't think people, some people I think just like kind of disregard them entirely since they're not like this immersive story kind of uh, album kind of format. It's just kind of like a weird compilation of lots of different bands paying tribute to whoever um and, and i get that it's a different kind of thing but this is as a timepiece this is amazing uh, and also the performances and the recordings of these songs are fucking amazing um this came out originally on black sun records which is a super just amazing swedish label from back in the early 90s um and they put this out and i think it got kind of popular enough but it didn't stay in print because Black Sun Records went under um, but Candlelight Records I recently discovered reissued this both of them in one disc which is fucking awesome because one of them was way better than the other one so I always wanted both of them but um, I wanted one way more than the other one anyways let's get to the dirt here um, this fucking track list is insane I don't know if you can read that, but starting the thing off with Dissection playing Antichrist, that is probably the greatest metal cover ever. Uh, in a lot of these cases, I prefer these versions to Slayer. Um, and that's saying a lot. I had a big Slayer period when I was like 19 years old. Um, I got I really burned out on them when I was about like 24, 23 or so. But Dissection doing Antichrist, Hypocrisy sucks, Merciless doing Cryonics, and then At The Gates doing Capture of Sin is so fucking good. It's hard to say when exactly, what sessions these were recorded in. It's pretty obvious Dissection recorded Antichrist when they did Storm of the Light Spain, but I'm not sure if Capture of Sin by At The Gates was recorded when they did Slaughter of the Soul, or maybe terminal spirit disease, or maybe even before that, I'm not sure. Um, but we've got Invocator doing Altar of Sacrifice, Highlights, Edge of Sanity doing Criminally Insane, um, really weird, Enslaved doing Jesus Saves. Around this time, this is like 95, before Elt came out, so that's really weird. Um, and the Edge of Sanity cover of Criminally Insane is amazing. Seance doing post mortem. Um, necrophobic starting off the next one with Die by the Sword. And then a weird one by Luciferion, Chemical Warfare. Cradle of Filth doing Hello Eights. This thing is just packed with tons of great bands Sinister, Benediction, Anathema, Vader, Malevolent Creation, Liars in Wait, Unanimated. Tons of great shit on here. If you're a Slayer fan, this. This is pretty essential, I I gotta say. I picked this up on Discogs for, I think, five bucks. 
can't go wrong with that. So then, last but not least, um, there is a seller on Discogs doing like these Russian bootleg kind of loving reissues or whatever, but he charges a fucking shitload for his releases and it kind of fucking drives me nuts, but I've had these two things, I've been just dying to get copies of these for so long. I decided finally to pull the trigger on these things. Um, the day I decided to buy these, I saw that he was offering like a, a deal with all three of his releases. There's these two releases, and then I guess he did the new Batushka album, which I don't fucking follow any of that shit. I don't have a clue what happened with all that shit, but he, I guess he bootlegged or whatever the new Batushka album with these two releases. And so he was offering a package deal, and I said, look, I don't give a fuck about Batushka. Will you just give me a deal on these two? And he did. And this was back in early November. Dude's in Russia. So I waited from, I waited all of November and December. Seems like it's been longer than that, but <laughs> I waited forever. I thought I, I thought I got screwed. I think I wound up paying like 50 bucks after shipping for both of these CDs. Which isn't crazy, but it just kind of feels wrong when it's a bootleg. But these are really, really well done. I'll start off with... Dude, this is so good. Decomposed Funeral Obsession. So this... If you don't know Decomposed, first of all... Stop this right now and listen to Hope Finally Died. Um, a band that never got their fucking due. Um, just elite fucking doom death. So this... Funeral Obsession EP came out in 92, I want to say, um, and it was just two songs, but the reason I thought this was worth getting was Dude added um, Demo 94, a remixed 7-inch EP, which I don't understand, um, a demo, and then a bunch of live tracks on here, so it's, it's a really nice kind of thing to have, and since I knew I would never get a copy of the fucking Funeral Obsession um, and if I did, I would wind up paying like 30 bucks for two songs. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck with this thing. Um, and another thing I noticed is that the very day after I bought two copies of for us Black Friday sale, motherfucker, um, all the covers for the original releases that this comes from, and then even more. And then uh, a cover of the whole thing. And like, if he had sent an extra copy, yeah, maybe I would hang that up, but I'm not gonna fucking take this booklet and tack it up on my door. I thought about it, but I don't know. But just the absolute fucking cream of the crop, Death Doom from the early 90s. These guys were so good. And Hope Finally Died is the only album they ever did, and it is flawless, except for the fucking artwork on that thing. The reason these guys never got any attention is because they released one album uh, with the absolute worst artwork you could possibly have. It's it's the saddest fucking story in all of 90s metal history. So, I'll try and leave a link down below. I think it's like Leningrad.cd is his Discogs username. And like, I don't know. Bootlegs are banned from being sold on Discogs, so he sells these under the listings for the original releases, so it's kind of shifty the way he's doing it, but I don't know. I'm pretty fucking happy to have this. Um, Diamphidia is the name of his label. Diamphidia? I don't know if that works, but... So the next one here is Elastis with The Just Law. And if you'll remember... I did the uh, Necromantic Full Moon Rituals mixtape, and I did a lot of exploration, and I came across this album, which I was basically unfamiliar with. I, I may have heard it back in the day or something, and it just didn't click with me for some reason, um, but it finally did click for me, and I became fucking completely obsessed with this record. This is the original cover artwork for it. 
And uh, it was the very first release on Voices of Wonder Productions, VOW001. Um, they're from Switzerland, and they came out with this record in 93. Um, and a lot of this material was written by a member who then left to join Samuel and then do their first records. Um, and like, if if you don't agree that those are some of the most important fucking metal records of the 90s, go fuck yourself. Or you're wrong. Um, so, like, I I don't know how that's so undiscovered that, that, that his talent also existed here with Elastis. Um, a band who otherwise buried their good name with a bunch of shitty Century Media records. So, if you're asking yourself, is that the Elastis that put out that fucking dumb thing on Century Media or whatever? Yeah, that's them. Um, but this is so primitive. It's so just, just bone dry and dark. Uh, I, I just can't get enough of this shit. Um, so there's a big poster of the original painting that they had done for it. And yeah, I would hang that up if it wasn't the booklet of one of these great CDs. Um, and like the Decomposed, he also did tack on um, both demos that they did, Black Wedding and a promo tape, uh, which, if you're keeping track, um, those songs on those demos are also on the album. There's only one song on those demos that isn't on the Just Law debut. Um, and he also, for some reason, put this reworked artwork on there, um, which... I don't know, it doesn't make any sense because on the Decomposed, this is exactly the same cover as the Funeral Obsession originally was. But anyways, I so strongly urge you to check out The Just Law by Elastis. If you want something just massive and primitive and dark, um, it's just cavernous and simplistic for its time period. Um, it's just so good. It's just so bare bones and basic it just i love how unassuming it is and just fucking dark and unholy it is some people have said that the drums are a little bit off-putting and they're weird um it sounds like i think he's playing maybe an electronic kit um so there are some kind of it would definitely be a lot better if it was a real drum kit but it's one of those early 90s records that has a lot of charm because of its mistakes and its personality that's uh, borrowing mostly from its misgivings and just the weird eccentricities about it that make it original like music used to be uh, it's remastered in 32-bit as well so I was actually surprised to find how much better this copy sounded than um, the high quality downloads that I had made or downloaded uh, so yeah, I am super happy to have this in my collection, and I just hope some of you guys check out the Just Law by Elastis. Um, actually, I forgot. I have one more thing to talk about. Um, just got this in a couple days ago. Speaking of the early 90s, this is... Actually, this came out in, I think, 99. Nagelfar's final album, Virus West. This is a reissue, I think, first time on vinyl. Van Records put this out in uh, 2017. Uh, talk about a fucking masterpiece. Uh, Nagelfar were from Germany. They put out three full lengths, uh, and they were just super good. Uh, drummer, not only did he go on to do Ruins of Beverass, but he really took this style and ran with it and made it what Ruins of Beverass eventually became. Um, so if you're at all interested in Ruins of Beverest, I think it's at least a novelty to go back and listen to Nagelfar and really hear those elements in their more primitive and black metal forms. Uh, Virus West was their last album, and it doesn't really matter what their best album was, um, because all of them are so, so godly. I wish they would have done a little bit more artwork-wise, but... There is a nice booklet here with some band photos. Um, it's a double LP. Side D is just a screen printed version of the cover, which you also get on this booklet. Um, but there's the original cover. Um, 
There's some cool fan photos in here. There's uh, Alexander Malinwald of Ruins of Everest. There he is again. But yeah, uh, Naglefire were fucking great. Classic 90s black metal. Um, and not just in the cult way. These guys were fucking awesome. Just in amazing songwriters. So check out all this stuff. If you already have, let me know what you think about it in the comment down below. We will see you next time.